FM. Our conversation with IUP President Mike Driscoll brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you. Good to have you back in the studio with us, too. It's been a while. It yeah. has been. Too long. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about IUP, where it stands at the beginning of this uh, spring semester. And, of course, one of the things I wanted to talk with you about today was the state system redesign mm -hmm. and how it is actually going to affect the way that IUP operates and, and how you implement some yeah. of the proposals that are out there. Absolutely. I think that, that what I've been saying is that um, higher education, IUP included, is it's a new reality. The world is changing, students are changing, the needs of employers are changing, and we just know there are going to be fewer 18-year-olds out there graduating from high school over the next 10 years and beyond. So we're all rethinking how we bring that high quality education to all the people that we're supposed to serve. The redesign will allow us to share um, courses, expertise across the 14 universities. So a student in Indiana can benefit from the great IUP experience, but they can also then benefit from the expertise of a faculty member on the other side of the state if uh, that's the area they're interested in, whatever that area might be. So that's just a simple example of the sorts of things that we'll be working on and have in progress right now. You mentioned, the, you used the phrase new reality. There's actually uh, about that for university, about the various aspects of that. Enrollment is changing, our course mix is changing. All of those things will continue to change, but the fundamental goal is still the same, and that's providing high-quality education at a reasonable cost to those people in Pennsylvania who can benefit from that. And, and that's what we've been doing for over 140 years now, and we're going to keep doing that. Yeah. Um, state System Chancellor. Uh, Dan Greenstein has uh, really been a breath of fresh air uh, in Harrisburg, hasn't he? I, I, I just got back from a couple of days. All the presidents and, and Chancellor Greenstein were together to plot the next steps, if you will, and mm -hmm. just amazing energy and vision for the future. And it's going to really transform the system and each of the universities into what we need to be for the next 50 years. It's kind of interesting to me, too. When you get together with other university presidents and you talk about IUP in relation to your relationship with those other schools, there have to be some, some, by necessity, really different perspectives coming because of the different states of each of those schools. We're, we're all located in different areas with different strengths and different challenges, quite honestly. And, and part of the benefit of coming together is to um, share our thoughts, our best practices, the way we're dealing with the challenges we, we face, and, and to learn from each other. And it's a really great group of people. When you start uh, a new academic year, you always have your state of IUP uh, speech that you give, a presentation at Fisher Auditorium. Lots of folks always interested in what you have to say. So we're a semester into that and moving forward to the spring semester now. Think back to what you said mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. and uh, how some of those things that you advocated then or spoke of, uh, how they're being implemented, how they are making a difference? Well, I, I think a couple of, of things that were very important, and, and the first one is continuing to focus on students and their success, making sure we're providing great support for, for every student that we see. And we're seeing some good things going on there with the university college providing additional support for explorers, students who haven't chosen a major when they come in the door at IUP, and, and really providing providing um, all the services they need to be successful. So we're seeing some good results from that work already. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our um, Imagine Unlimited campaign is still going forward in great great shape. Um, we're around $68 million, I think, toward our $75 million goal with gifts coming in all the time, and that's very, very exciting. So th that, I think, was another thing that I talked about. And connecting those two, the campaign's bringing in a great deal of support to provide additional scholarships and other things for our students. On a less exciting topic, we continue to work to balance our budget and, and live within our means as, as we make the changes we've been talking about. And that's going well. It's uh, something that requires everybody on campus to be involved. And we're really, um, I won't say excited about the work, but engaged in the work in serious ways. When we think about IUP over the last couple of years, there have been some, some pretty difficult roads that you've had to go down. Uh, one of them has to do with diversity mm -hmm. uh, and multicultural issues. Theo Turner is going to come in and visit with us later, right. later in the week about an event that is coming up. Um, the climate at IUP has to be such 
that everybody's going to feel welcome when they come here. And I know that's been a real priority of yours. It, it's a challenging, challenging task, I think, just because the the world seems more divisive than than it once was, and people jump to saying negative things so quickly as opposed to getting together to talk and learn from each other. Last year we did the uh, year of free speech, and we continue to build on that, which was really about understanding the rights and responsibilities that come with that that ability to say whatever we think. Mm -hmm. How do you do that respectfully in ways that allow for the person across the table to say something valuable? I do think we'll continue to see a number of events. We are having events um, about the um, tools that people can use to have that reasoned dialogue, that civil dialogue that we've been talking about. I think I have, um, let's see, coming in, you mentioned the event that Theo's going to come talk to you about. I think that on the 27th, there's an event that may be of interest. We have a gentleman, Kyle Richard, who will come in and talk about sexual violence protection and um, positive manhood is how he phrases that. Um, Kyle won the Biden Courage Award in, in 2018, and you may recall that an IUP student, Adriana Brennan, won that award last year. And so we're, we're featuring national folks coming in to help us learn how to work with each other. I think it's going well to, to just give a diagnosis, but there's so, so much more work to do as we, we encourage people to live together even when they disagree and do that in respectful ways. Yeah, and that sort of word and that work is, is what really makes IUP the welcoming place that it needs to be in order to have a healthy student body and a, a student body that is, is working together as a family sort of atmosphere. Um, one of the things that uh, interests me when we think about the population at IUP, and you mentioned the University College, mm -hmm. that has been in place for about a year now? We're in our first full year of first implementation year. now, so we've got about a year plus, I guess, with, it, with the doors open, yeah. Yeah, and, and how has it gone? Because I know that that is something that a lot of people have a lot of hope for. Well, you know, it's really been remarkable for me. We talked about explorers, those students who don't come in with a major uh, choice on day one. That concept has really resonated when I say we don't call you undecided anymore. We call you an explorer, and we recognize that's a valuable way to spend your first semester or two in college. Um, a lot of people have come up to me, adults, saying, thank you for saying that. I felt horrible when I was in college, and I didn't have a major. So, so the goal is to provide a, a, a real home for these folks, just as somebody who comes in saying, I'm going to be an accountant has you know colleagues, friends that are going to be accountants. And, and it really has resonated quite well. And we're seeing some good results in those students being connected to the university, being part of the community, and that translates into them staying around, finishing their degrees, and going on. You know, one of the interesting things here at Indiana in the morning, we welcome the school districts. They come in and they visit with us. And uh, especially when I have seniors, but even younger students, we had junior high students in here yesterday. And, uh, and I always ask them about their future plans. Have you decided yet? Are you, um, and uh, we know there's all kinds of pressure, especially as you get to your junior and your senior year, to decide, okay, where are you going? What are you going to do? It's coming at them from every angle. That's a part of what this is all about, isn't it? It, it really is. And we know from, from the research that students tend to change majors one, two, three, four times while they're in college as they explore, and, th and that's what they should do. You want to make those decisions while you have time to adjust and get the right, right skills and education to go forward. And there's some research that suggests spending a semester or two looking around a little bit when you're in college can actually get you to your degree faster mm -hmm. than if you go down a path and then change course two years in. Yeah, yeah. makes perfect sense, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, talking with IUP President Michael Driscoll this morning, and uh, one of the topics uh, you mentioned, the states, or I mentioned, the state system redesign. The shared system, where a student at IUP can also be studying courses in any of the other 14 universities, that has to be a pretty hopeful sign as well. It, it's a wonderful thing, and I've been impressed with how some of our faculty have reached out to faculty at other universities. Our um, anthropology department, which is very high quality, has a great master's degree program. 
um, has already reached out and formed a partnership with Mansfield University to allow students to benefit from their faculty, our faculty expertise, and then transition to the master's program. Anthropology is actually a, a fairly high demand degree mm -hmm. because those folks will go work for state agencies or consultants because you have to be careful when you dig up the ground to build a new building or build a new road because you may find um, artifacts from the past and how do you treat those and how do you deal with the surrounding environment. And the, so we see great employment for those folks that come out with those degrees. Why does the road curve here? Now That's exactly right, exactly right. <laughs> Who decided we needed a curve right here on this road at this time? That's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's, th you know, those are some of the things, new tools that we're talking about uh, as the state system redesign uh, goes forward. Have we turned a corner? Is it a very long corner? Are we in the right direction? We're headed in the right direction. There's a lot of work that has to be done still, though, to make sure that we stay the path. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, that part of that discussion has to be at the level of the state's investment in higher education and the state system in particular. Um, we know that Pennsylvania is a little behind most of the rest of the country in terms of dollars per student. And um, we're pleased that there's a proposal to talk about now from the governor. And I, I think I need to talk a bit about that because part of it's us changing, but part of it's about the investment that needs to come. The um, Nellie Bly scholarship has uh, been proposed by the governor. There's a long road between here and the end of the budget cycle in Harrisburg. Nellie Bly attended IUP a very long time ago, 1879, I believe, mm -hmm. for about a semester. Her father passed away. And uh, then uh, she no longer had the funds. I believe someone who was managing the family funds was not exactly honest with them, and she ran out of money and had to leave. She went on to be a, a, a renowned journalist doing incredible things to expose the plight of some um, folks in mental institutions at the time. The governor's proposed about $204 million as a fund for students who attend state system universities full time and then stay in Pennsylvania one year for each year of support they get from the program. Um, and if they don't stay in Pennsylvania, they end up uh, turning that into a loan that they have to pay back. That's a remarkable statement of, of support for the state system, for our students, and for keeping bright people in Pennsylvania to contribute to our economy going forward. Again, a lot of work to go in the legislature, but the state is a partner in what we need to do and needs to continue to be a partner as we move forward in that redesign work. I know that uh, there have been all kinds of statistics about the value that is returned to the state by every dollar that is spent by the state, something like $11 for every dollar. It, it's about that, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty remarkable stat. It is. If you, if you just think about it, we're, we're businesses and, and we spend money. The universities are in each of the communities we're in. But more importantly, the thousands and thousands and thousands of students that graduate each year are ready to hit the ground running in, in jobs, in creating new businesses, and supporting existing businesses. It makes a huge difference in the future of the Commonwealth and tax revenue, quite honestly. He is IUP President Mike Driscoll. Thanks for coming in this morning. It's great to be with you. Let's make it so that it isn't a year or so before we see you again. Okay? Yeah, I'd like to see you <laughs> sooner next time. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's my right. fault, I think. Uh, thanks again. It's great to be here. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM.